Hi, this is Dan Buller, retired electronics engineer, sitting out on the front deck of my house, but again, oh my god, it's wonderful, it's May, it's Friday, a lot of fishing boats out there. Um, I wanted to talk about some really interesting stuff. Back in October, I was asking you to go investigate, back when I didn't have as much hair, but it's coming back, to investigate doing a new law of physics, the fall off of the harmonics and I came up with a solution but guess what it's just a Fourier transform <laughs> I came up with it in my sleep you know it's a Fourier transform and you know okay kudos to me for coming up with the Fourier transform without uh, um, knowing how calculus works but it's pointless to even think about it because you need calculus to do this you absolutely need calculus. Now, I'm sort of kidding there. I, I know how calculus works, but I've never been to calculus school. I don't know about calculus, but you know, I can do calculus. So I've invented things in calculus. So, um, but uh, uh, don't bother. You know, it's like, here's how it works. Okay, law three can really be summed up by saying this, okay? The harmonics are the vector sum of all the distortions in the sine wave. Vector sum. So, some are positive, some are negative, some are 90 degrees, some are 270. That's why if you get uh, clipping on both a positive peak and a negative peak, one direction cancels the other direction, and you don't get any even harmonics at all. And so that's why they look so crazy. And just get used to it, you know. So um, harmonics are the vector sum of the Bullard harmonic solution for every angle in the wave. Every angle in the wave. It's just, it's just that way, you know. It's just that way. And I don't think you're going to find a simple solution. If the, if the distortion is very wide, then the lower harmonics get bigger because they're the sum of all the lower harmonics that keep getting boosted up and boosted up and boosted up. And if um, you have distortion on top and bottom, even harmonics are going to cancel out. That's that. So another fishing boat, goddamn fishing boats. You know, just buy some fish. Go to Safeway and buy some fish. Why do you these fast fishing boats? Boy, the fish must be really fast. Okay, it's gonna go by. Oh, it's a, uh, it's a Tyco. It's back again, Tyco. With the silver nose. Okay, um, in, addition, in addition to that, I want to mention some other fun things that have happened here. I'll let you look at these little videos, these short clips. Um, these guys doing crazy shit. There's power boards and there's this key princess glory, which we love to death. Um, there's guys jumping off of buildings. That's all happening right by me, you know? And so when we sit on the front deck, we watch all this crazy shit go by. And it's incredible. It's a great place to live. And the rent is cheap, 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 cheap. So, you know, if you're looking for a cheap place to live, okay, you gotta live with scum, but you know, the scum eventually goes away, you know. Let's see, one scumbag, he got drowned himself by trying to save his dog. He had a meth pipe in his pocket. There you go, problem solved. Another guy, he just went to prison. He's gonna go to prison for five years. I don't know what he did. But you probably deserve it. So, um, yeah, you got to live with scum. But then again, you get really cheap rent and you get a beautiful view. So, uh, you know, it's all good. It's all good. Speaking of scum, um, I, I hate to do this, but I did it to Tony. Tony. Tony was being a pest. And he commented, it's really funny. I can see how my, how uh, Tony's mind works. 
which is very small, so you don't have to worry about it too much. Tony does his comments, types his comments while he's watching a video, and then he may or may not like come to his senses in the end. In the, uh, the video where I talked about um, aliasing, I'm, I'm a fan of aliasing. I know a lot of people used to not understand aliasing at all. And when I worked at Maxim, we used a tester. It was called a 3000, I think it was a Creedence something 3000, ASL 3000 was where it was. And not the STS 3000. STS 3000 was done by the people at Axiom back in Burlington, Massachusetts. And the ASL 3000 was done by another group and they did RF. And there, they did a down converter. So they down converted. Super, super heterodyning, heterodyning, you know that kind of stuff. It's like, it's really cool. So Tony says, oh, Dan doesn't know anything because subsampling exists and there's sampling receivers and oscilloscopes. He insults them with arrogant disregard. There's super het, there's RX and spectrum analyzers down convert with linear mixers, blah, 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 can down convert. I was doing this before he was fucking born. I was working in radio doing mixers and, and was, the Navy gave me a radio back when I was at San Nicolas Island. I don't like accepting things from our government, but they insisted that I take this radio and I tuned it up and I had it tuned up the intermediate frequency stage. And I had to do it twice because the first time I did it to the wrong frequency. And I did it, eventually I got it right, and I did a beautiful job tuning up this receiver, and I gave it to a friend of mine. I mean, they were going to throw it away anyway, but um, it was like a 1940s receiver. So I know all about aliasing and heterodyning and all that crap. The problem is that people with college degrees don't really understand how that works. And the thing that I got published with in, in test and measurement world I wasn't doing heterodyning. I was doing some really cool stuff, finding a frequency, any frequency from DC to 160 megahertz. It could have gone up to like 300 megahertz. So DC to 300 megahertz with a 33 megahertz tester. No way Tony can obfuscate that. No way he can. And so here's what happened. When Tony wrote this, he wrote it while he was watching the video, and I can see his brain working. It's pretty simple. But um, in the end, I made the point that, you know, some people would look at this and say, oh, wow, well, you know, that works great for 160 megahertz. Well, what about other frequencies? Well, it works for all frequencies, and I proved it. I proved it. I proved it. So then what's Tony going to do, right? So he deleted the post, went back and deleted his comment on YouTube. But here's the thing, if you're familiar with YouTube, if you post a comment, the creator automatically gets an email. And so what happens is, if you go back and delete that comment, it doesn't matter. I've already got the email. So I have the email here, and here it is. Now, I want to read this one part. This is an embarrassment to EEs anywhere. Uh, Tony, I'm not a double E. I'm not a double E. I don't have a double E degree. I don't have any degree at all. I don't even have associates. So, if you think that you can insult me by saying this is an embarrassment to double E's, it's an embarrassment, all right. What you're saying is an embarrassment because I showed you the one video of MIT. MIT! They couldn't figure out how harmonics create a square wave versus a triangle wave, a ramp wave, you know, that, that's an embarrassment. I mean, that's an embarrassment. And those people, they need to be embarrassed for that. So if I were Tony, I'd be embarrassed by even talking about this stuff. So what I did was, I got tired of him pestering me with all this stuff. Um, uh, the last time he pestered me was, uh, I did a post on LinkedIn about how you must have an M that is prime. You don't have to have an M that is prime, but everybody thinks you do. And 
in order to do coherent sampling. Well, Tony doesn't know what coherent sampling is. He's never heard of coherent sampling. He thinks I'm making a joke about or making some comment about coherent arguments. No, coherent sampling. You know, if you don't do coherent sampling, you don't know what you're doing. You're a fucking idiot. And Tony is a fucking idiot. So he did a comment on that. That's it. So I found a way to block him. So he won't be bothering me on LinkedIn anymore. Can he bother me on YouTube? Yeah, sure. If he wants to keep his comment up there. But you know what? You know, just to suffice it to say that if I don't like your comment on YouTube, I might delete it. And I can do that. I have the right to do that. And I have the ability to do that. So go ahead, Tony. But I, you know, I'd rather capture your comments and post them here and let people see it. Okay, one more thing. A lot of times I talk about how great Excel is for doing FFTs. And um, I don't have a lot of backup there. Sakamoto, who was like, he's like a president or VP or something, Sakamoto says, oh, I'll ask my tax guy to help me. Your tax guy doesn't do FFTs, Sakamoto. So um, I found this article by Analog Devices on doing FFTs in Excel and why it's so good. Why is it so good? Because if you want to do FFTs with a standard tool, the other standard tool is MATLAB and I'm I'm connected to MATLAB. So um, uh, MATLAB sends me emails and stuff all the time. So you can use MATLAB, but it's 3,000 bucks, $3,000 for a bare bones license for MATLAB. Now, what does Excel cost? Myself, I've never bought Excel, but virtually every time I've gotten a PC from any work company, I get Excel. So you can do Excel, and there you can do an FFT, and if you get, you know, Excel for the PC or Excel for the Mac, you can do an FFT. All you have to do is add in that little um, add to it, and it's free, it doesn't cost you anything. So I'm sure Excel is not free, but it's very, very useful. I mean, it does some amazing stuff. And it's the standard by which every other thing is based. Now, I've done I've done stuff on, on the previous Vista, the, uh, the STS-3000, the Schlumberger S-9000, uh, EXA, I've done all the all these machines have FFTs, and you can do FFTs on them. But they're proprietary, and they, they lock you out if you're not a user. So you, you have to use MATLAB, which is 3000 bucks, or Excel. Or you can write your own. I, I, I have written my own FFT, and if you want to, you can do that. And if you don't want to get, if you have Excel, but you don't want to use their FFT, you can use other people's FFTs. Lots of people produce them. So you can do some amazing stuff with the FFT. And like I said, the FFT is brilliant. Fourier was brilliant. And I have duplicated Fourier's work. I haven't just copied his math. I have thought about it, went through my head, and I realized, son of a bitch, if I was to do what I'm talking about, it would be a copy of what Fourier had done. And the Buller harmonic solution is not that different from half of a Fourier transform. It really is. And so it's really just comparing what I was thinking about doing was comparing the spectrum of the sine wave against the spectrum of the distorted wave. That's sine and cosine. It turns out it's, I'd be replicating Fourier. So, you know, let's just put it this way. Great minds think alike. Okay, Fourier was a genius, and you know, if you learn how to do an FFT, you really, really, really should learn how to do it. And if you don't know how to do it, you better get to it. You know, you better work on that shit. Anyway, um, I think I showed you enough of the jumping off the building and stuff. It's really fun stuff. There's some crazy people out here, and living on the water is lovely. My rent is less than $500 a month. So all you gotta do is find a boat. And there are boats here for, for sale. Let's see, Bruce's boat is for sale. 
because he just died. So his boat's for sale. There's another guy, he died. His boat's for sale. Somebody else had one over here for sale. They said, make us an offer. And he took the offer. So whatever it was, you know, it could have been 5,000 bucks, could have been 2,000 bucks. My first floating home was 8,000 bucks. So if you want to live like this, uh, I don't know, maybe you don't, but if you want to live a great life out on the water, you can do it cheap, you know, you just have to put up with some bullshit, a little bit of wave and act, wave action and uh, fishing, fishermen gone by. But um, there's some fun stuff going on out here and you should get to it, okay? So once again, from the river, this is Dan Bullard.